God bless you. Glory to God. How are you doing this afternoon? We bless the name of the Lord for being here in this place one more time to be in his presence, just to sit amongst family and friends and just explore the Bible on tonight. This is our Thursday night Bible study in the month of March 2023. Glory to God. It's been a good day. It's been a hard day for me, but guess what? God has given me the ability to press, press, press. And press on, glory to God. We're in a different place, in a different stage in our life, glory to God. We just bless God and give God all the glory and praise. There's no doom, there's no gloom, there's no sadness there. It's just happiness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost for what the things that God is doing in us. And sometimes we have to go through seasons that we may not understand. But this one thing you got to know, that it does not matter what the season looks like. It matters that you know who you are and whose you are in this season. You got to know that you are a part of the body of Christ. You are a child of God. You are in the family of believers. And sometimes when you get into a place that you feel like you can't go on no more, you got to learn how to hook up with somebody else that may have a little bit more faith, more strength, more power, more perseverance than you do. So you can pull on them in your time of weakness, glory to God. And they did in their were in their time of weakness. You know how to pull on and, 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 and receive and give in other words. Thank you, Lord. It's, it's an even exchange, glory to God, that when, when I'm weak, glory to God, not only can I confess out of my mouth that I'm strong, but I can find a brother or sister with some faith, belief, and hook up and link up arms together, and together we can go in. Hallelujah. I like it when it says something about if one man fall in the ditch, glory to God, will you be another brother or sister or mother or friend that have the ability to pull somebody up in this season? We got to know this. The Lord had allowed me last night to release. He's talking about the love that we have, that we should have one for another, that love covers a multitude of sin. It does not matter where anybody is. It matters the fact that God has allowed us to be in the place. Not only do he cover us, but he wants us to cover one another. So today we are blessed. We are happy to be here one more time and again just to lift up the name of Jesus and say that all the good and wonderful things that he has done and yet is doing for us so we bless him on tonight we thank you all who are here live glory to God and we thank you here who on zoom we thank you here for the people that will come and listen later on glory to God we pray in the name of Jesus that God will give us something to say to help you along your journey to open up your spiritual eyes and your spiritual ears that we're something we release in the room and in your atmosphere, in your hearing, that are called you to think, come outside of the box and be able to plug into what God is doing by his spirit. Oh, Lord, I thank him on the day for his grace, his mercy and his strength. Glory to God, because it is him. It's just like this. And we have had this in my house like for like months with a battery. Glory to God, just won't be connected. Either it was low cell, no water, or hey, it blew, it did this, it did the other. But every now and then you got to go back and you get got to get a recharge. And on Thursdays, on Sundays, when the Lord comes or bring us back together Wednesday night, whatever your Bible study is, he gives you an opportunity to get a recharge. Glory to God. So you can go out there and do those things that God has called you to do. We bless God today. Father, we thank you, Father. Let me start right there. And we just want to acknowledge who you are in our life. We thank you, God, for being the God of our salvation, the God who keeps us, the God who loves us, the God who shields us, the God who corrects us, the God who takes us from one dimension to the next. We thank you on tonight, kind Father, for moving by your spirit, Lord. We thank you on tonight, Lord God, not only for us, but for those, God, who don't even know you, Father, in the part of their sin, oh God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you touch them in their heart, oh God, and cause them to run after you, God. We pray, oh God, that they'll be able to release their burdens and their cares, God. Lay them at your feet, God, and get an exchange, for you are the one that cared for them. We thank you on tonight, God, that everything, God, that people have prayed privately according to your will, Father, we thank you now in advance, God, that you are working things out for your good, that they 
that they're good will come forth, but God, that ultimately that you would get the glory, Father. We thank you now, God, for what you're doing by your spirit. We thank you, Lord, that I, I have not seen, nor have I ear here, nor have it entered into our heart, Lord. The things, God, that you are about to do, we thank you now in advance, oh God. We thank you, God, for the blind eye to open in the name of Jesus and the ear to hear and the dumb to, to, to begin to speak, oh God, and the lame begin to walk in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for people, oh God, hallelujah, with heart issues and heart problems, God. We know you not only to be a mind regulator, but we know you to be a heart regulator on today, Father. And we thank you, God, for what you're doing by your spirit, oh God. We know that you are a God of impossibilities. What look impossible to man, God, is so possible with you, Father. So we stand in faith on today uh, and we believe what looks impossible, God, that it is possible, Father, for you to cause a miraculous shifting to happen and a change, God. Hallelujah for all these things that come into alignment to your word, your will, and your way, God. Uh, we give you glory on today, God, for what you already done. Uh, we thank you, Father, for staring us up in the spirit, oh God. Hallelujah for taking us from one dimension to the next dimension. Uh, and no stress, no anxiety, uh, no calamity, God. No destruction, God, can come up in your presence, Lord. Uh, so we pull everything down, God, of its high place. Uh, that exalts itself against the knowledge and the power of who you are, oh God. Uh, open up our ear and let us hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to us. Uh, as individually and collectively, oh God. Uh, open up our spirits, oh God, that we may be able to receive, Lord, the things that you are releasing, God, uh, and everything that we have carried, God, has been a false weight in the name of Jesus. Uh, we release it from our mind. Uh, we release it from our heart and we release it from our spirit uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Uh, we just want you, God, to have free course uh, over our life, God, uh, to change us, mold us, and make us into another man, God. Uh, let us be sensitive to your spirit, oh God, and let us fulfill everything that you have assigned to our hands in this season, Lord. Understanding, God, that we don't make no decisions, God, without God. Confirm with you, oh God. Lord, is this the way that we should go, oh God? And Lord, if it's not the way that we should go, God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you lead us into the right direction, Father. You say your sheep know your voice, God, and another man's voice they will not follow, God. So every voice that's speaking louder than your voice, oh God, to your sheep, we sound in the name of Jesus, Lord. And God, we loose that anointing to cause us to hear and hear correctly in the name of Jesus. So we silence all other voices and all other forces, God, in the name of Jesus, that we can hear what the Spirit is saying to us on this night, God. We give you glory, Father. And as always, God, you, we are nothing, God. Hallelujah. With, without you, Lord. With you, God, we can do everything through Christ Jesus. Jesus, uh, that strengthen us, Lord. Uh, so now, God, we don't rely on our own senses, uh, our own feeling, our own strength, God. Oh, Lord, uh, but we rely on your strength in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, God. Uh, for what you're releasing even now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you glory on today, Father God, and we thank you, Lord. You are our Alpha and our Omega, Lord. You are our beginning and our ending, God. Hallelujah, and we bless you this day, God. We thank you, God, for having your way, God. Do what you want to do the way that you want to do it, God, and we'll come subject to your will. We'll come subject to your plan. We'll come subject to the assignment, Lord God. We'll come subject to the call. We'll come subject to the release. We'll come subject to the anointing, God. Hallelujah that you have released even this night in this place, oh God. We thank you for the fire, God, that yet burns within us, oh God. We thank you, God. Let us burn for you, Jesus. Let us glow for you, Jesus. And Father, we give you glory in advance. And we call all these things done in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, and we seal it in the blood. Uh, hallelujah, Father. We just bless your name on today, oh God. Uh, we give you glory, honor, and praise. There is no God like you, Jehovah. We are blessed people just to sit in your company. We are blessed people, God, just to 
to sit in your presence. We are blessed people, God, just to hear your word. We are blessed people, God, just to know your name, God, for your name is holy, Lord. And we thank you, God, for your holiness in the mighty name of Jesus. Help us to be the chaste of the Lord. Help us to be upright before you. Help us to come out from where we've been to, God, and go into you even the more, even deeper. Oh, God, thank you for opening up the floodgates of heaven and releasing what we need in this season, oh God. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your favor. Favor with you, God, and favor with man, God. We release it on tonight, oh God, under the hearing of your people, God. Do what you want to do, Father. Have your own way on this night, oh God. This is your day, Lord. This is your night, God. You do what you want to do and say what you want to say the way you want to do it, oh God. And we'll come subject to it, Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus. You are more than enough, Lord God. You are everything that we need and then some more hallelujah when we exhaust ourselves god you do not you keep on going forth you keep on manifesting yourself lord and you keep on showing us who you are we god make mistakes we lose our temper we get in the way oh god we do all these things but your love god brings us right back to who you are your love chasing us your love correct us your love rebuke us oh god your love is love and it's kind and it pulls up into another direction of where we ought to go God and then it teaches us how to be humble and then it teaches us how to be nice and then it teaches us how to go in and then it teaches us how to come out and then it teaches us how to give and then it teaches us how to receive hallelujah not only from each individual collectively or whole from the tangible but it teaches us how to receive the intangible the invisible the things that you release in the spirit oh God we thank you all tonight Lord Jesus about the release of the Lord, about the door, God, about the way we are to go and the things we are to do, Father. We give you glory on tonight. We thank you, God. Let us see in a new light, God. Let us see in a new vision, God. Let us see in a new way, oh God. And we'll continue to give your name the glory, the honor, the praise. You are our Alpha. Hallelujah. You are the door. You are the way. You are our peace. You are our strength, God. Hallelujah. And besides you, God, there is no other God. Hallelujah. We bless your name on today, oh my day, they say, hey God, we bless your name on today, oh God. We thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord God, even right now, Father. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Father. There is no God like you, Jehovah. Hallelujah. We bless you for being Jehovah Nisi. We bless you for being our Jehovah Jireh. We bless you for being Jehovah Rapha, God. We bless you for being Jehovah Rohi in the name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, God. Hallelujah for everything you're doing, Father. We thank you, God, that when we get into a place that we can come to a, a place that is higher than where we are, God, and we still have strength to reach for your Father. And you with your good step reach back down to us, God, and you grab us, you hold us, you secure us, uh, and you let us know, oh, God, that everything is going to be all right. We thank you, God. Hallelujah for allowing us to hold on in this season uh, and know that everything is going to be all right uh, because this is the will of the Lord. This is the way of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. And the Lord will get the final glory. He'll have the final say so. And I trust him today. Hallelujah to do what he said he gonna do. Hallelujah to deliver and heal and to set the captives free. Oh my God. We bless your name on today. We cover our family members. Mm. We cover our children, Lord. We cover our enemies, God, because they don't even know why they're the enemy of us, oh God. But Lord, we thank you for them because sometimes it's them that help us to push closer to you, oh God, that we can dodge the bullet, that we can dodge the dagger, God, that we can dodge the fiery dot that's been thrown against us for no reason or cause, oh God. We thank you now in the name of Jesus for being our shield and our protector, for being our butler, 
God, for being a hiding place, oh God. We thank you now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. Do what you want to do, God, the way that you want to do it. We subject to you, Father. We thank you. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Woo. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Oh, Lord Jesus, help us, Father. Help us, help us, help us, help us, help us today. Thank you, Father, and amen. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody like my daddy. Oh, Lord, you can go through some things sometimes. You don't even know the hair from the tail and the tail from the whatever. And you looking around and you trying to figure out how that thing going to work out. And God will work that thing right out right before you. But you got to be in a place that you can trust him. Our scripture for tonight is this. Psalms 119. Glory to God and 10. Hallelujah. Which we with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Verse 11 said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, my God. The Lord gave me this, and I might just read this, and we might just be done just like that on tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It was this. <clears throat> the Lord, the thou word, oh, Lord, it is a keeper. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord, Lord to God, will keep you. It'll keep your heart. It'll keep your mind. It'll pull you from one thing. Your mind be telling you one thing, and you'll hear the word of the Lord coming up in you when you don't put some stuff down in there. Hallelujah. I heard many of uh, uh, preachers before say that they um read in the Bible about open your mouth wide, and the Lord was going to fill it. So they was open their mouth, but nothing didn't come out. But nothing don't come out of nothing that you don't put a deposit into. Woo, Lord. So you got to be in a place that you put a deposit. You put a demand on some things. Uh, some things are shift when you put on the man and I'll tell you this testimony because you know that's where we're gonna go glory to God I was feeling kind of or something something these last couple of days and still not out of it but I made up my mind yesterday I began to talk to the Lord I said now God I'm tired okay I entertained this for a good little while but now it's time to come up out of this thing and because I began to confess that I stood in my faith guess what I've been feeling better and better and better every day hallelujah sometimes glory to God is, is, is what you gotta stand up against I stand on the word of God it says that by his stripes I I am going to be healed. But first, I got to know that there's a word that's out there for me to read, for me to let um, be, let it in the atmosphere, for me to grab hold of it, for me to stand on it. When I say stand on, I mean repeat it out and believe it. I mean, just accept it. That if God said it, it's going to be so for me. I believe that by his stripes that he bore on his body, that I am going to be healed. I'm standing on that in my beliefs. And my belief is firm, not because of what I read only, but because of the things that I already experienced. He already don't heal me before. So in my mind go back to the last time that there was a situation or a circumstance. He's a God, glory to God, that will prove himself not one time, but over and over and over over again. I, I had to get in a place where my perception of things was different. Uh, hallelujah. We got to be in a place, glory to God. I don't care what the last season was, uh, but your perception got to be, if God spoke it, I believe it. It got to be, if God is going to do it, I'm going to stand on it. And I'm stubborn enough and I'm ready to fight in the kind of way that it is that I know how to stand, glory to God, against the stance. So you going to stand me down? No, not so. Uh, I'm going to stand on the Lord's side. And the Bible told me this. Uh, he told me that I was was on the winning side. Oh, Lord. And because I know I'm on the winning side, hallelujah, that gives me the power and encouragement, hallelujah, to stand against, hallelujah, anything else that will be buffing up against me. The Lord gave me this. He said this, God's revelation, God, God word reveals, let free its wisdom for any man who will come and pick up her, talking about wisdom, she is free and available for what for what costs a penny. It won't cost you a thing to receive it. It's free in other words. But we'll release everything you need. It won't cost you nothing, but it will give you everything you need. He said, loose its way 
and let it give you direction. Who you know how some of us want to be big boss, huh? Hallelujah. We want to dictate every situation. He said, now nah, loose the way, loose the way, and I'm gonna give you the direction. He said, set up with her and she will speak. What will speak? Hallelujah. Wisdom will speak, direction will speak with our wisdom and make known to you knowledge. He said, if you set up with her, if you spend time in my prayers, I'm going to speak and I'm going to speak in wisdom. And then I'm going to give you the knowledge of the wisdom that I speak to you. Woo, Lord. He said, your perspective will change as this revelation will touch you with its divinely holy power. Woo, Lord. This is something you ain't never experienced before. Hallelujah. It's not nothing that you can think of or nothing you can conspire, nothing that you can put together, no plan, no set, no pattern. It's the way of the Lord. It will reform your whole life. Reform me. It will alter. It will change it for the good. Ah, if you are willing to partake of it, you got to be willing to let go of what you think, what you feel, what you know, that you can partake of what of, of it. He said oh, what he already has made ready. He already don't got the thing ready for you. Oh, Lord, it's already available. But if you don't know it's available and you can't perceive it, it's available, you will miss your time of availability that the Lord has released over your life. He said, yes, you he said, yes, you, in other words, you, you as an individually and you as collected as a whole body, for you are his and he is yours. <laughs> he said this, you know how sometimes you get little people in uh, relationships and they was like, you know, this mine, no, they ain't yours. Or these my people, no, they're not your people. These are God's people. He said, but you mine. And when he said you mind, you ain't got to worry about nobody trying to pluck you out of his hand because they can't pluck you out of his hand. He said, this is what the fight is all about. You letting go of your will to become everything he has called you to be. He said, if we let go of our will, we can walk into everything that he already planned. Hallelujah. So you got the will. Let your will be the will what he wants for your life. You were and is always forever on his mind he sent his son and he released his word for you to learn and enjoy the benefits <laughs> you gotta know that there's benefits yes he is the one who still tugs at your heart he said i'm still tugging at your heart he has been speaking to you through his holy bible and through everyday life situations and the circumstances. So sometimes he'll put you in a little situation, situation, see how you're going to respond and see if you're going to pass the test. If you don't pass the test, he know you're not ready to come out yet. So then he'll allow another little circumstance to come up. And in that circumstance has come up, he put you through another test. You think it's all about the other individual. It's not about the other individual. This thing is about you passing the test. <laughs> he keeps calling you closer to enjoy the final things of life. It's not all about the tangible things. They will come in due time. He promised as he promises as you draw closer to him, you will receive all those things. He said he he been stacking them up. <laughs> he been stacking them up waiting for you. He waiting. He, he said when the right time come, he said there will be a release. These are good gifts. They are, they will not break. They will not rot. No man can steal these. They, these are the treasures of heaven. Ah, what are some awesome, I said, what an awesome God we serve. He will let you see where you're going before you get there. He'll give, he'll put it in your heart. He'll let you go after it. Hallelujah. And you'll be like, I don't even understand why I want to do this. Or, I don't even understand why I, I just feel naturally uh, to go this way. He'll put it in your heart. He said, you just, you just got to seek him and search for him. It's in your seeking and your searching. He said this, treasure <clears throat> transforms. It's equipping us for a victorious life. See, some of us don't know how to receive that because we ain't walked in a lot of victories. Or maybe we might be in a circumstance or a situation right now. We can't see the end of that thing. So we don't think it's no treasure in it. We don't think it's no good thing in it. But that treasure is transformative. It's, an import, it's important because it, it releases power. And it is powerful. 
It's a priceless treasure. It produces faith. It produces love. Woo, Lord, right there. When you can be in a bad situation, you can still look out in that situation and find something about that thing, that person, that situation that you can still love on and, and, and draw from that love, not from a place of negativity or, 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 or the situation that you was in. You got to still be like, Lord, they don't make me mad, but that's your child. I love them. And then you got to have the, the strength and ability to come out your emotion and your feelings and to pray for them. Woo, Lord. You mean pray for them? I'm going to tell you, I was in a situation years ago, didn't know how to respond. My attitude was all off and everything because the person had hurt me very bad and I didn't know how to respond. Hadn't seen them in years. Walked right into a church at a funeral and there they, were, there they was. Hey, Val, and they embraced me and I was standing like a stiff board. Woo, Lord, didn't even know what to do. But when my mind go back, to that, excuse me, from time to time again, the Lord was letting me know you wasn't here now, but I believe in this season, in this time, that the Lord gave me another chance. Even though what they did was wrong, I can still embrace them with the love of God at this time. Why? Because what he don't done on the inside, Christ is revealed and I whole character got to change. And if your whole character is not changing, the Christ that's being revealed, maybe you're not seeing him clearer or lower. Because we're forgetting that it's favor in this thing. It's benefits in this thing. It's blessing in this thing. And then he guides us in this thing. He's like, I'm going to show you how to maneuver. I'm going to show you how to get around. I'm going to show you how to do all of these. And you may be saying, what that got to do with Psalms 119 and 11. I'm going to tell you this. That was the end. I'm going to tell you the beginning. The beginning is that you got to have compassion. Hey, beginning is you got to have love. Beginning is you got to be concerned. Beginning is sometimes you got to let go your will. Hallelujah. That, the, that somebody else's will. It might not even be the will of the Lord. It might be that you not only have to lower your standards sometimes, that you can let somebody else come through. Because we're supposed to prefer the other over ourselves anyway. You're talking about coming up into the true character of God, that the word of God will be so engrafted in us that one, that we know what it says, and two, that we're able to produce after its kind. Mm, thank you, God. When you've been planted as a seed into something, and you have sown your life into something, something about what you have participated in should come up with growth. It should come up as maturity. It should come up with change. It should come up with transformation of what you used to be into the transformative of what I said earlier about God and his word, transforming us into his image. That more and more and more and more, we look like him. We sound like him. We behave like him. Because why? He is in me and I am him. You are in him. And you got to learn how to let go of everything that's outside of him so you can receive him in his fullness. Ha! Ah, oh, Lord. See, when you have the word in your heart, even sometimes you can get right up into the middle of a thing. You so far up in that thing, you be like, oh, Lord, get me up out of this. How in the world I got up in this? And the word will guide you. The word will direct you. The word will show you what to do. This is how you can take Psalms 119. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, God, I almost slipped when I was looking at what the record was doing. And I'm like, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I almost became judgmental. <laughs> I almost did other things. But the word of the Lord told me this. What? Sober in your thinking. Be, be firm in your belief. Know the calling that I have called you to. And he didn't call you to that. He called you to this. But you got to know what your that is not. And you got to know what your this is. This is the way of the Lord. This is the way of the Lord. This is the open door that God has released over my life. And then you got to be willing and able to walk into that. Why? When you had the word of the Lord in your heart, that you might not sin against him. 
And it's not saying so much that you might not sin against him, but the word is so hidden in you that there's no way you're going to keep on sinning against him. <laughs> it ain't that you might slip. It's the fact that if, if something was to come up, he would give you so much direction because of your relationship with him of how to maneuver and how to come out of a thing. And you won't even smell like the smoke that other people don't be in. The end. And it's not that you will justify yourself and say that you are righteous and you're this, you're that and the other. It's just because you trust him, he'll give you direction. He'll give you what you need. He'll show you the way to go. He'll show you even when to be quiet. I found myself in a situation today. I said, oh God, I don't like for nobody to come come at me like they're coming at me and whatever. And I was like, don't did a little bit this. And the Lord was like, calm yourself right down. <laughs> oh, Lord. I said, well, I think they roughed my fellas a little bit farther. And I had to come subject to where I was. Come subject to humble is the way. Come subject to even though God will put you in uh a place, an employment, or this or that, the other, he'll still give you godly wisdom on how to handle yourself. And when you are walking outside of what your measure is, or what your lane is, or what he has called you to be, you're walking outside the kingdom of God. You're just a good old religious spirit like we are sometimes. We justify ourselves in our own. Hallelujah. And crucify somebody else. Oh, they're going to get, no, nah, we in the same boat. We got to learn how to cover that we make it in together. Hide the word in your heart that you might not sin against him. Proverbs 7, 1 through 3 says, My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live. <laughs> and my law as the apple of thy eye. Bind them upon thy fingers or write them upon the tablets of your heart some people uh can quote the bible from front to back and back to front but they lifestyle god is looking for us in this season to have some integrity he's looking up for us to have love he's looking for us to be patient, be kind, be humble, be meek. He's looking for us to be teachers. He's looking for us to be examples. He's looking to us to raise up the children in the way that they should go. He's looking for us, glory to God, to put our hand to the assignment that he has called us to walk into and to fulfill it and not be looking, glory to God, and, and as an excuse to get out of what we said that he has called us into. The Bible does say this. It said, count up the whole cost. <laughs> and that is in everything that you put your hand to. It's been plenty of times, glory to God, that we were outside of, talking about me, things that I was supposed to do or should have done or been accountable to. Had no accountability. But then there come a time that the Lord was like, there's no way that you can keep on going this way and call yourself. A woman, a saint, a believer, a Christian. So when you was a child, sometimes you do childish things. But come on, you cannot be a baby forever. You ain't been, you've been saved for 50 years. <laughs> you've been preaching for 45 years. And you still swallowing and choking over a gnat? No. You still... Passing around bottles one to another and having adult tantrum tantrums. Hide the word in your heart. Then when the circumstances come up, you got something to pull back onto. The Lord would not. That old saying was, what would Jesus do? Mm -mm. Jesus don't do his part. What would you do? What are you supposed to do? And we have to hold each other accountable. And be accountable before the Lord. If we stay accountable before the Lord. If we stay in a right relationship before the Lord. Some of this other stuff. We don't even have to worry about it. You know why? It falls right by the wayside. It's not even an issue. Our level of maturity going to come. As things begin to happen. You're going to have to pass the test. And when you feel your flesh and your spirit rising up. You better know right there. Uh -uh. There's an X on your paper. Come on down. 
Get in presence. Ask for direction. Ask for peace. Sometimes the Lord won't even allow you to be in a place. Sometimes he won't even allow you to touch a thing. He said, no, nah, give that to me. Had a situation come up. I began to pray, Lord, this needs to move out of the way. I don't like it, Father. And it's not so much of it was something against me, but it was something against the innocent, people that had no voice for themselves. See, some of us are not willing to pay a price for somebody else, but it's part of the call. It's part of the responsibility. And sometimes you got to stand up for people that don't even have no voice for themselves. And if it's wrong and you stand for righteousness, you got to be willing. You got to be bold. You got to be available. Stand on truth. Stand on the word. But speak against it. Not, not so that, you know, I don't want to get into that. That's none of my business. No, he called. He came for that. He didn't come to have this peace and harmony and sing a kumbaya like we think. He came to upset the world. Why? To turn it upside down. Why? Because it's going in destruction and hell. And he's trying to turn us upside down so we can know the right way to walk into, the right things to do. The right. He, he ain't called you to come in there to act no fool. Get outside your character and do things any kind of way. He called you to do things in decency and order. Because you don't get it in your heart, the word of God. You won't do anything outside of the word of God to cause a mark against the body of Christ. That's another thing that we don't take into consideration that our attitude or the way we carry ourselves carries a, a smell. It carries an aroma. It carries a way that when people see you, do they think of destruction? They think of a hell raiser? Do they think evil? What is they thinking when they see you? Oh, I don't care what they think. Something wrong with that picture. You should. When you're a believer, when you're supposed to be a representation of him and his royalty, he has called us to be kings and priests, ambassadors, people to speak upon his behalf. How can you speak upon his behalf and you tell your tale everywhere you go? He said it should not be named amongst them. God is so much calling us into alignment in every area of our life. So that when he bring you out, he not bringing you out with stains on your garments. But he going to bring you out with pure garments. You got to go through the process. You got to relinquish your will that his will and his throne and his heaven and his kingdom will be established. When you love him enough, woo Lord, you will lose your own identity. So you can find his identity. That when he looked down, he don't see mess. He see a reflection of himself in you, in me. Because of how we carry ourselves, not that we uppity acting looking down on others, but we learn how to go up on the others and lift them up. Was dealing with a situation, and Lord, I said, God, I ain't going to touch this with a 10-foot pole. I even told the person, you can say, oh, you're going to say, baby, I ain't going to touch it with a 10-foot pole. Why? I understand there always is another side, and sometimes it's just about perspective, and sometimes it's about that they never had an opportunity and sometimes it's about loving somebody enough, glory to God, to be able to stand in the gap for them. I'm not standing on nobody's side on the day. Don't look for me to give my opinion. And sometimes I have. And I'll be like, oh, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. Everybody has a soul. And the Bible says all souls belong <laughs> Saying that, forgive me, Father, for when I have crossed the line. Forgive me, God, when I spoke out of turn in time. What I realized is that I need grace 
and I need to give grace. And what I have to realize that everybody is not going to come into the same knowledge at the same time. Some of us, it takes longer to grow, to mature. That's not an excuse. It's just that I didn't have the same abilities, opportunities, knowledge. The scales hadn't fall out, fell from my eyes in so many areas. But God gave me grace. And because he gave me grace, it allowed me to give somebody else grace today. I had to, I had to and having to learn that. Having to have more patience more peace within myself because if you don't have it in yourself you definitely can't give it to nobody else but when you hide the word of the lord in your heart as you begin to read and as you begin to study and as he as you begin to see who he was that same character should be bending should be bending us should be shaping us should be molding us even no more into his image so where I was last week, shouldn't be there this week. Because not only have I hid the word in my heart, but he gave me some instructions. Don't do that again. Don't say that again. Get out of there. Then he teach me how to be a support, even when you're not even supported. Support. They don't have to include you. So I, our pastor Joe Babrady used to Bishop Joe Babrady used to tell us that, hey, they ain't include you. That's okay. Draw a bigger circle, include them. That don't mean you have to go to their club, go to their clique, go to their town, be at their event, have a party with they with with they with their habits. I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is pray. I am saying intercede. I am saying love. I am saying, remove your thoughts from it and say, God, what do you see? Or Lord, help me to see the way that you see. <laughs> God is going to bring us out of hiding. When he brings us out of hiding, glory to God, there's another release in that. And the release in coming out of hiding is that everything, glory to God, he's going to expose you to new things. <laughs> So everything is going to be new. You know that song that I love? New, new, new. Everything new. Because he allows us to see from a different perspective. There's the more we draw closer to him, the more he's going to reveal himself, the more he's going to give himself unto us if we're willing to receive him, to protect of his ways, and to allow him to change us in another whole way. The blessing of the Lord rest upon us. The blessing of the Lord go before us. We are a blessed group of people. Glory to God. Not because of us, but because of the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We are a blessed group of people because he allowed us to hide things in our heart and for those things to penetrate us and to work out in us everything that's not like him, Jesus, the Christ. And everything that's not like him has to be expelled. It's exposed. It's like when the light is shine, Lord to God, not only did it give you direction of where to go, but it caused healing and transformation in your life. You will never be the same when you have the word and then you let that word come out in you. Then what has been hidden to you on the inside of the house, of your house, now you're able to walk on the outside and freely give what has been given to you. Hey, God bless you on tonight. Give out what's been given to you. Everybody's not at the same level. Somebody might not be at your level, but give out love. Give out patience. Give out peace. Give it out in a measure that they haven't received it before. And let God do the work. You might be a waterer in this season. You might be a planter in this season. But you got to trust and know that God is going to give the increase on each and every season. Each and every time. Some people I know, even in my family, I might not be able to reach them. And that's okay. It's not my spell. That's between them and the Lord. What he has called me to do is stay in my lane. And if I be a waterer, 
fine. If I be a theft, it's fine. If they don't even receive it from me, fine. As long as God put them in a place to get the water and get the planting, fine with me. That's not my issue. My issue is that they will come into the kingdom of God and do everything that God has assigned them to do. Do great and mighty exploit. That's in this season. That's why we got to know the word of the Lord for ourselves. That's why we got to go forth and do the things that God has called us to do. Hallelujah. That he will get the glory and win many souls. And if the Lord will allow us to touch one soul and that soul touch 10 million, 10 billion people, so let it be. Hallelujah. That God will get the glory and that many souls will come in the kingdom of God because we was willing to have the word in our heart and let the word work the words that we can be an example for one, just one. That's all it takes. And tonight, we pray that you might be that one, glory to God, that will give your life to the Lord and allow the Lord to use you for his glory, for his kingdom, for his upbuilding, the Bible says, of his kingdom. That you can win many souls, not even because of what we think or what anybody thinks, but because of what you know the Lord is doing in your life even now. It's an active word. It's a powerful word. The Bible said it pierces down. Separated. <laughs> so it does not matter what you think got a hold of you. There is a lot of demarcation that can separate that from you. That you can walk into the fullness of what God has for your life. Begin to read the word of God. Ponder on it. Think on it. Meditate on it. People want to meditate on a lot of things. Meditate on a good scripture. Keep it in your memory bank. Hey, you might can only remember one scripture, but keep that before you. It will pull you. It will help you. And it will strengthen you. And it will take you to the next level until God releases the next thing. Hallelujah. It was times in the Bible where the Lord would allow different ones to come by and partake. Give them what they need to strengthen them for the next battle. And that's how he do with us each and every day. He'll let you call somebody. He'll let somebody come by. He'll let you meet somebody in the supermarket just to give you an encouraging word. Even on this day, I have forgot about this. Got a call from a lady that I just met just a couple of weeks ago. She said, I feel like the Lord is telling me this for the day. She said, don't worry. Everything going to be okay. She said, do that resonate in your spirit. I said, glory to God. Yes, ma'am. She said, all right, have a good day. See you sometime next week. And I was like, all right, we hung up the phone. But God knew what I needed for the day. They helped me along this journey to get me where he needed me to be. And that's how good he is. Even the small, minute things you would think, he right in the midst of all of that, giving us what we need each and every time. So don't even put your mind on what you think it should be. Put on your mind, say, Lord, whatever I need in this season, God. Father, release that that is needed because he's going to give us what we need. God bless you. We love you. Good night.